this example here. With this one I've got an issue in that the function doesn't it exist for all x in the real line because look it's a power for half is same as the square root of this whole expression and we can't take the square root of negative number you can see here that's a positive and that second term is a negative so it could be that you could end up taking a square root of a negative number we'll deal with that at the end because that's not uh, our focus here is on differentiation so apply the chain rule uh, okay just to backtrack for some reason I put a minus instead of a plus my question should have been a plus so I put plus but the thing still holds about the interval of x for which this function exists. This could be a negative, this could be a positive, so it could end up being, um, it could end up uh, taking square root of a negative number. Okay, so df by dg, so here is my f function, so take that half down, subtract 1. Here is my g function. Now, here I've got another issue because look, I apply the rule, so some rule first, so apply differentiate each term and add them together so that becomes 1. Now this term though, but look at it, it itself is a function of a function. So apply the function, treat this as a separate problem and solve it. So you take the third down, subtract 1 to get this bit here and then multiply by the derivative of the inner bracket like so. And it um, doesn't look nice, but if we, sub we multiply these two together, we get this, which can't simplify the power here different. That's minus a half. That's a power of one. But we have to address the issue of when does this derivative exist? So for to that, we can go back to the original equation here. Now we note that if x is positive, so you've got two terms here, both involving x. If x is positive, then that's a positive number. The second term will be a positive number. Then fx will be for sure, this whole thing, sorry, in the brackets will be for sure a positive number, so taking a square root of that will be fine. So the only problem arises if x is negative. If x is negative, there must be, there will probably will be some values for which that this whole bracket here is negative, and then we can't take the square root of it if we want it to be a real number. If we want the function, the result of the function here to be a real number. So we have to solve so that this inner bracket is bigger than or equal to zero because those are the allowable that will be then we can take the square root of those numbers. In other words we have to solve for x this expression. So where did I get this expression? Just pulled it out from here. We want all that to be bigger than or equal to zero for the function to make sense. Oops, uh, where I've missed out here, third, haven't I? All right, so here x, oof, x third plus eight. Take the x to the other side, and then to get rid of this. Uh, um, 1 over 3rd here would take do the opposite which is cube every th both sides like so now if you're wondering why this is a minus because you know that if we take two numbers negative numbers and multiply them together we'll get a positive number well it's because of this if we cube minus x that's the same as saying minus x times minus x times minus x if we take two of them together, two minuses make a plus, so that gives us a plus x, but then we have a plus x times a minus x. I mean, what am I doing? Minus x times minus x is going to be a plus x squared, two minuses make a plus, and then plus x squared times a minus x, well, a plus and a minus makes a minus. If we multiply them together, so we get minus and then x cubed, so that's how I get that value there. Alright, and so we can find that then x, this function, will exist x bigger than or equal to minus 4 over 3, which is approximately minus 1.587. So the derivative will exist for x 
bigger than or equal to da -da -da, that number. I'm going to show you what this function f at looks like. It looks like this x along there, fx up there, and where it cuts this axis is this number. You see? So the function exists from x is bigger than or equal to minus 1.587 onwards, so you can calculate the derivative for those points from x being that value onwards. Okay, just to recap, presented the chain rule for one variable. I've given you kind of the structure on how to determine whether the chain rule is applicable. I've remarked that this chain rule may be extended for more than two functions, so instead of a function of a function, you could have a function of a function of a function, and so on. Finally, we note that this chain rule can be used for functions which have more than one input, more than one variable. So in this whole point of this video is we're studying for one variable, x, but you could do it for functions involving more than one variable. Okay, so 